and it's their intrinsic nature. Yeah, it's like, cool, basically. Rob. Sound. somehow came from monkeys. So now you have to understand psychopathic racism and how sick it is. Like this is a sickness for people to sit here and do something like make a little boy live in a cage with a monkey to try to prove the theory of this one racist white man who want to say that we evolved from monkeys because they can't accept the fact, the hard truth that we are the original man, the pure humans, the original people on the planet. They couldn't accept it. It destroyed them. So you have to look at this whole Darwin theory and say, no, we came from monkeys. But when you hear about the Darwin theory today, what do they relate it with? Everybody. This is how they try to cover it up. They relate Darwinism to every person, to black, white. They, it doesn't matter. But if that was the case, how come they wasn't putting white people in the zoo and saying they was monkeys? How come it was only black people? So they're not going to tell you this in history books. They're not going to tell you the truth about what really was going on back then. They're going to try to sugarcoat the story and make it like, oh, no, Darwin was talking about everybody. No. Darwin was specifically talking about black people because there was no human zoos with white people in there, period. So now when you got this testing going on in the early 1900s, when they can't stand the fact that black man was there in Europe first, when they can't stand it, they're trying to come up with something to prove Darwin's theory. So in comes Charles Dawson, not Darwin, but Dawson. And what he does is he creates Piltdown Man. Now, everybody knows about the Piltdown Man if you have researched this story in England, in a uh, little town called Piltdown, that he supposedly found these remains, these bones. And what he did was he fabricated a skull. He took the lower jawbone of an orangutan and attached it to a normal skull and said, poof, we found the missing link. We found these black people. Now, again, when you research this story, they will never tell you that they specifically said that this is an African people, that this specifically matches with Darwin's theory. They won't tell you this. There's only a few scholars who will put this in relation, but the proof is there. This is who they was talking about because zoos increase after this so-called discovery. So Charles Dawson and a few other people basically forced this whole Piltdown man and they took this lower jaw of orangutan, put it to a regular skull and said, hey, we found the missing link. Now understand, a missing link would be what? When you look at this whole chart of evolution, if we evolve from monkeys, guess what? We can't find this man, and we can't find this man. We can't find any proof of this man or this man. We're talking about the progression of us coming from ape into man. We can't find these skeletons. So if that's the case, where is these skeletons at? We can't find the link. There is a missing link between us and apes, which is why a lot of people don't buy into Darwin's theory that we came from monkeys. So now understand Charles Dawson and these other scholars who he got to help him fabricate this whole story. And they backed it up saying that, yes, this is all real. Yes, this is right. They backed the story all up and Charles Dawson got to live out his life as a hero, as a, you know, world renowned scientist. He got into all kinds of new societies and he got, he made all kinds of money and he lived a good life. Meanwhile, because of his discovery, we had zoos open in Norway, zoos opening all over the world, these human zoos where they took black people in there, put the little kids in there and had white people throwing bananas and stuff at them, saying that we evolved from monkeys because of what this man did and what these people backed up. Now understand, this is another reason why I don't subscribe to this whole theory of uh, the white man is a devil and the white man is evil because there were many white people who knew what he did was wrong and they was trying to come out. A man named Dr. Oakley was the one who came out and said, you know what, this is a forgery, but this is almost 50 years later. So this whole gap, we talking from when Darwin first opened his mouth all the way up until the 1950s, I think it was 1954, when Dr. Oakley, you know, did the whole research and said, no, this is a forgery. This whole thing is a fake. And it wasn't until like 1958, almost 1960, when the human zoos finally shut down. So you got the 1950s when human zoos are shutting down. Now understand, this word didn't spread out to everybody. It was no internet. 
There was no TV media that was going to put this story out and say that, well, wait a minute, this whole thing was a, hurt, a hoax. This is something that was known within the scientific community. They didn't go tell Joe Blow that this whole thing is a lie. So all those people, these thousands and thousands of people, we're talking about 30 to 50,000 people used to come almost a day to the Bronx Zoo to see Oda Banga walk around with his monkey. They didn't go tell all these people that this whole thing is a forgery. So you got in the minds of these people that we come from monkeys. So enter the 1960s, into the whole civil rights movement, into the hatred between black people and white people or white people hating black people. Look at this whole thing and you can understand why they look at us as we are monkeys, we are an abomination, we are a missing link, we are something that is not natural. They look at us as we are, you know, some kind of genetic mutation. But in reality, they sort of are. So the whole thing is a big big misconception, a big mistake that still to this day, they have not made completely public because I've gotten into arguments with people. I've gotten into arguments on YouTube with racist white people who said, you caught, you guys come from monkeys. My grandfather told me you come from monkeys. Such and such proof you came from monkeys. And I'm like, oh my God, how can you possibly believe that in this day and age? And then look at yourself in the mirror and say, you didn't come from a monkey as well when you look exactly alike, except you got longer hair and you have lighter skin. Now, all of this research was blown out of the water anyway. All this digging into, you know, who was here first, was it black people or white people? All this stuff was blown out of the water in 1974 when they found AL288-1 which is the Lucy bones. And the Lucy bones go back to over 3 million years old. And it's the bones of a woman found in Ethiopia, believed to be of the Twa or the Pygmy tribe. Now when we look at the Twa people, they are a small people, look at them. They have a small stature. The men, the grown looking men, but small bodies. A lot of people believe that they are the oldest people on the planet or come from the oldest people on the planet. Now, we know about the ancient Egyptians talk about the Twa a lot. We know about goddess, god Bess, who people believe was a Twa. They are all over the place. There are still statues of these people in ancient Egypt. So, either they lived for a very long time or, you know, they, a lot of them was probably wiped out. But, of course, today, we can still find the pygmy or the Twa people today in Africa. And a lot of people go and visit them. They are very nice people. They look slightly different from, you know, the hieroglyphics that we see in ancient Egypt. So we don't know if it's a different species of Twa or a different race of Twa, which is why I say they probably was wiped out the uh, race that we see in the hieroglyphics because they look a little bit different. But these people go back millions of years. They come out of Africa. So it's not much more that we can show to prove who the original man is. You can't find a skeletal remain. You can't find the body of anybody that goes back further that traces to another race, period, point blank. Everybody goes back to Africa. So now understand, this is going to be hard for people to accept. I can understand it. But you have to look at reality. You have to put your hatred aside and recognize the truth and realize the truth. For the people who still do not want to accept this after watching this video, if you watch the video in its entirety, you have to just look around and look at the facts. Especially if you white, find me an indigenous people. Now understand this, this is something that a lot of people don't realize either. We can go into every race of people and find an indigenous people, an indigenous population, except for one, and that's the white people. So if you go into Africa, guess what? You're gonna find African people running around, butt naked or half naked, just like they used to back in ancient days. Same thing in India, same thing in China, same thing in Japan, same thing in South America. All these people run around just as the indigenous people did. So we can find the indigenous people of all these other races except white people. Now find me, find me a group of white people who are walking around looking like this, screaming Chicago. The reason why you can't find a white civilization that looks like this is because once all civilizations begin, once they all start out, they started out primitively. They started out like the indigenous people. So when you had these people first go out and set out to start a civilization, guess what? They started with minimal means. We're talking about thousands of years ago. Now, 
Once the white people came on the scene and they set out to start a civilization, guess what? The civilization was already there. They just went into places that already had people because that's where they came from. They couldn't go somewhere and start a civilization because they already came from a civilization, meaning white people can't go out and start an Africa because they came from Africa. They came from black people. So now understand, African people, black people was already on the earth populating for hundreds of thousands of years before the Asian came on the scene and then later the white man. So again, if one of these black people or one of these Asian people have an albino baby, that baby is raised in that civilization, raised within that group or that tribe, raised up. Then it goes out later on when it's older, who is he going to go and play with when he's probably the only or few white or albino people in the world? They didn't know enough to just start their own civilization and they didn't have that mindset to just get together yet and start a civilization. So they grew up with these African people. So since we, have, we were already established all over in many different places and building kingdoms and building cities and stuff like that, they just came into where to what we had. So if you've seen my video, uh, Game Over, the Israelite Doctrine in the Old Testament Destroyed, this is what I was leaning towards when I was saying that we was already here. And when you start reading the Bible, the Bible was talking about basically how this tribe of Shem, or these so-called white people, came into civilizations that was already established by the descendants of Ham, or African people, and took over. You can tie it all together. Now, I'm obviously not a religious person, people know that, and this is, religion is one of the other things that separates people, which is why I don't, I don't bang with it, I don't really, you know, I don't follow it, I don't subscribe to it, and I speak against it. So, we have to understand what has taken place, and I say that a lot because, I mean, that is something that is really serious. What has taken place? History. What is going on? Just like we can look at Charles Dawson and we can look at the newspaper and the people who spread that noise, who said that, you know, you know, same thing with Darwin too, who spread this whole thing about us evolving from monkeys, who didn't want to tell the truth and tell people, the, you know, the true story of what's going on. The same thing is happening today. The same instigator, the same perpetrator is the media. And we don't realize that the media and the people who own the media and run it and control it is behind this whole divide and conquer situation. The whole thing is to keep us separated while they control the world. So all that happened is this, people. You got a group of people who got together who have money. They got together and said, let's put our heads together, let's put our money together, and let's try to take over the world. Understand, this is what has taken place. That 1% versus the 99%. It's just a small group of people who said, hey, I know how we can control this whole thing. Let's get together and let's try to take over everything. Meanwhile, before these people ever came together, civilizations have been established. Races have been established. People and generations who have a rich history, who have done some amazing things that have contributed majorly to society already are here and have already existed. Nations have risen. But you have these people who say, you know what, we want to take all this stuff over. We want it to be all ours. Let's form this secret society and let's do this. But we got to put people against each other. Can you imagine if the news just ran a story for the next month saying everything I just said, saying that we are all the same, we are all equal, we all come from Africa, so we should all respect Africa. We should all respect each other. There's only one race, the human race. If they ran this story, the unity that could take place just by telling the truth but they won't do it because they need us to be separate. They need to conquer us. You can stick with black versus white or what have you. What's going to happen in the end? Let's say we have this big whole race war, black versus white. Then what? Come on. Everybody knows that this world would suck if it was just one race. Now, it's a shame how we can't see the obvious facts in front of our face. We can't see the real enemy because we are blinded by history. We are blinded by hatred for one another. And who is the root? Who is the cause of this hatred? Now, if I go to a guy and I say, hey, I saw your girlfriend kissing this guy. And then I go to his girlfriend and say, hey, I saw your boyfriend kissing this girl. And then they come together and start arguing and fighting, but they never bring up the fact that I'm the one who made the accusations. They never bring it up. 
And this is what's going on with the news media. The news media says one thing and shows one thing. And then they says one thing and show another thing to another group of people. And then we come together and we argue about it. But nobody says anything about the news media. They are the instigator. They are the instigator of all of these issues. They come out and they print articles and they make, you know, TV shows and they make all of these things to separate us, to make one race look a certain way and another race look another way. And we come together and we basically we argue about it. We develop feelings and emotions about these things that have taken place and we get upset. Meanwhile, we never look at the source. We never look at the source. We just get mad at each other. If you turn on the news and you see that the media is constantly talking about what's going on in a black community, black people killing black people, black on black crime, black this, black that, and they never show the problems of the white race or the white community, then people are going to think naturally that there is something wrong with this black people, with this black community. But when you look at the numbers, look at the numbers. In some years, white people have killed more white people than black people have killed more black people. And that's a fact. You can look at the FBI numbers and see it. But because the news media is only talking about black on black crime constantly, consistently, trying to paint us in a different light, trying to make us separate, trying to make it so that I can walk down the street and when a white person is coming towards me, they can look at me and just see criminal and they'll cross the street. It's this fear that they have generated where they can't even be in the same elevator as us and not feel scared. That's something that we don't look at. We have to understand who is doing this to us. Who is doing this whole thing? It is the media. The media make us look like animals. They make us look like thugs when we wear certain clothes, when we could be college students. We got to understand who is doing this. It's the media. Plain and simple, they are the enemy and the people who control it and run it is the enemy. There's no way in the world that a white person should feel scared because a black person is coming towards them and he's dressed a certain way. Now, if a black man is out jogging with a hoodie, that's scary. But when a white person do it, it's normal. He's just jogging. What is this black man running from? And if we don't look at this and say something is wrong with that. It's just like, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to jog because you're black. You're not supposed to wear this hoodie because you're black. This is the media. This is what movies and media does to the minds of the masses of people. Make them look at people in a certain light and they are good at it and they have been good at it for decades now.